the central idea of this new worldview, which you can call dataism because it invests authority in data, uh, the central tenet is that given enough data, especially biometric data about a person, and given enough computing power, Google or Facebook can create an algorithm that knows you better than you know yourself. Now, how does it work in practice? Let's give an example so it doesn't stay too abstract. Let's say you want to buy a book. I'm in the book business, so it's very close to my heart. How do you choose which books to buy? So, which books to read? So, in the Middle Ages, you go to the priest, you go to the rabbi, and they tell you, read the Bible. It's the best book in the world. All the answers are there. You don't need anything else. And then comes humanism and says, yeah, the Bible, there are some nice chapters there, but there are many other good books in the world. Don't let anybody tell you what books to buy. You just go, and the customer is always right and all that. You just go to a bookstore. You wander between the aisles. You take this book. You take that book. You flip. You look inside. You have some gut instinct that, oh, this is an interesting book. Take it and read it. Uh, you follow your own instincts and feelings. Now you go online to the Amazon virtual bookshop, and the moment you enter, an algorithm pops up. Ah, I know you. I've been following you <laughs> and following millions of people like you, and based on everything I know about your previous likes and dislikes, I recommend that you read this book. You, you'll find it very interesting. But this is really just the, the, the first baby step. Uh, the next step, if there are people here who read books on Kindle, then you probably know, you should know, that as you read the book, the book is reading you. For the first time in history, books are reading people rather than vice versa. As you read a book on Kindle, Kindle is following you, and Kindle, which means Amazon, knows which pages you read slow, which pages you read fast, and on which page you stop reading the book. And based on that, Amazon have quite a good idea of what you like or dislike. But it is still very primitive. The next stage, which is technically feasible today, is to connect Kindle to face recognition software, which already exists. And then Kindle knows when you laugh, when you cry, when you're bored, when you're angry. The final step, which uh, probably will be possible in five, 10 years, is to connect Kindle to biometric sensors on or inside your body, which constantly monitor your blood pressure, your heart rate, your sugar level, your brain activity. And then Kindle, which means Amazon, knows the exact emotional impact of every sentence you read in the book. You read a sentence, what happened to your blood pressure? This is the kind of information that uh, Amazon could have. And, you know, by the time you finish the book, let's say you read Tolstoy's War and Peace. By the time you finish the book, you forgot most of it. <laughs> but Amazon will never forget anything. <laughs> by the time you finish War and Peace, Amazon knows exactly who you are, what is your personality type, and how to press your emotional buttons. And based on such information, it can not only recommend books to you, it can do far more spectacular and frightening things, like recommend to you uh, what to study, or whom to date, or whom to vote for on election. In order for authority to shift from you to the Amazon algorithm, the Amazon algorithm will not have to be perfect. It will just have to be better than the average human which is not so very difficult <laughs> because people make terrible mistakes in the most important decisions of their lives. Like you make a decision what to study or whom to marry or whatever, and after 10 years, oh no, this was such a stupid, <laughs> such a stupid decision. So Amazon will just have to be better than that in order for people to trust it more and more and for authority to shift from the human feelings and choices to these external algorithms that not only understand how we feel, but even understand why we feel the way that we feel.